Hey guys and girls, uh, this is Sean K116. Just a real quick note before this video begins. Um, I do apologize, there are certain points in it where the mic pops and the video um, stutters, it looks like. Um, I'm not sure what caused that, so I do apologize for that. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started with the video, and I will see you later. What is going on, homebrew vehicle sandbox community uh, developers as well? My name is Sean K116, and today I'm going to be going through another list. Now, this list has, I think, 17 or 18 things on it, um, and I have done the developers a favor this time. I have it broken down into categories, and at y'all's request, I will be emailing a copy of this list and the notes. That way you have them. <laughs> All right, so... For this video, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing things from my desktop. I have a few video clips that I will play every once in a while, depending on the topic. And then that way, you can see exactly what I see and what I recorded. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one up is voice chat option for hosts, whether to enable or disable it in their own server that they're creating. Because right now, all we can do is type unless we're in Ventrilo or TeamSpeak to talk to one another and I really think the addition of voice chat to the game would be awesome so that way we can carry on driving flying doing whatever we're doing without having to stop to type um, so I think that would be an awesome improvement another um, the next two things that I'm gonna be going over is um, glitches uh, they don't happen all the time but when they do they stick around for a little bit and then they're gone so I can't um, replicate them upon command, I guess you could call it. Uh, but at the same time, they are a huge pain in the ass whenever they do happen. First one being what I've called the vehicle freeze. Now, you can drive your vehicle around, fly it, take it on the water, do whatever you're going to do with your vehicle with only you in it. However, there are times whenever someone else hops in that vehicle and now the vehicle is frozen. It won't move. It doesn't do anything. Um... Every once in a while when this happens, you can see if you have wheels on your vehicle, they're turning. But it's like the car itself will not move. It's, it's stuck in that place. It can't go forward, sideways, backways, up, down, any other way. Um, like I said, when it happens, it'll happen for a while and it affects everybody. And then sometimes there's no issues with it. So, yeah. The next thing up is going to be what I have called the load glitch. If you're in multiplayer... Uh, this I can get somewhat to replicate. Um, it's it's more common than the vehicle freeze, but if you're in multiplayer and you go to the workshop and you come out of the workshop, um, for whatever reason you get this looking glitch, where one person is standing, the other one's sitting, and they are connected to each other for whatever reason. And sometimes when this happens, you'll see them like walking around in circles because they're pressing keys and they're controlling a vehicle elsewhere on the map. But for you, it just looks like they're walking back and forth in place or walking in circles. It's pretty, pretty funny, I suppose, um, to see. All right. Now, the next thing up is um, a sync loss. And what I mean by that, the synchronization in the multiplayer uh one person will get in like a helicopter and I'll hop in with them and for the, their own, on their screen they're flying around doing everything per normal but for me I'm we're just sitting on the ground they're still in the vehicle the vehicles turned on and we're just sitting in place on the ground so I don't see um, us flying up in the air and this also happens whenever um, I'll be on the ground standing and watching somebody get ready to take off and on my screen, they're still sitting there, but on their screen, they are, excuse me, they are flying around, driving around, doing whatever. And it's not just on my end, it has been reported by other players that I'm flying around, I can see I'm flying around, or I'm driving, but for them, I'm just standing there, I'm not doing anything, and then if I land, get on my vehicle, and spawn a new one, magically on their screen, I have teleported across the map. Um, with no connection there or on my end um, just last night I was playing with Squash and we had this happen where he was flying his helicopter and on my screen he was just sitting there and we weren't doing anything 
and then he gets out of it a ways down the coast spawns a new one and all of a sudden he's just teleported way way down the road so synchronization issue there um that could be worked on the next thing um is the binocular bug as i call it say you have well actually I'm not really sure what causes this to happen, um, but when it does, it's a pain. You can't do anything uh, except for Alt F4 out of the game and restart up. Now, I've had it happen to me a few times where I'm in the normal map and I go 1, 2, 3, no lag for me, and we go to the test map so we can drive high speed land vehicles. Um, whenever I go into the test map, every once in a while for me, it locks me on the binocular so I can't hit tab to change from the spawner to the binoculars I can't hit escape to get to the menu I can't hit enter to type I can't do anything but look up and down um, there's no feedback from the mouse for side to side all I can do is look up and down and that's it um, so I'm not sure exactly what's causing that or how to replicate it so I can make a video of that for you um, I will continue to work on that see if I can't figure it out all right, so that's all for the multiplayer side of things. Now we're going to get into building. Um, this is going to be a list going over a few things there. So first up, the gyros. Um, in the description, there's a great history lesson on them, which I read through it and, you know, I thought it was really cool. But what I like to see is just like every other part where it has general information on how to use it. So it, a better description or a picture to show the axis of how gyros work um, so new players can easily figure out how they need to set up their gyro. Uh, this is regarding the rotational gyros. Uh, let's see here. I think this is the video. Now, if you, you can see right here, you got the normal gyro and you've got the description, like I said, which is really cool. A lot of awesome information in it. Um, and then it's the same description for the rotational gyros. You know, it's pretty cool and stuff like that. Like I said, it's a good read. Now, what we're looking at here is where I, you know, quickly um, just freeze it on there. And what I would love to see is some kind of marker identifier put onto either this side or the far side that is off camera that indicates the top and the bottom. So with the way we're looking at it here, we can know immediately before putting it on the vehicle going into the tuning section and turning it on we can see from this point right here is it going to spin towards us so it would be going from the uh top area down to the bottom or is it going to be spinning away from us where the bottom is coming up to the top that way we can uh build and know exactly which way it's going to go so some kind of identifier to know the top and the bottom and then in the description have you know more information on how we use them and what access is which um, I was given a picture and it was an awesome picture that you know if you could do something with or create something similar for the use of the um, help information where we can see here you know the rotation axis for pitch roll and yaw I think that would be awesome because right now um, when I first started using the rotational gyros I honestly <laughs> couldn't figure them out until someone broke it down and helped me figure out how it works what is what and how to properly put the gyro on for the correct axis um, so that would be great the next thing that we have um, is the limitation of the uh, curve creator in the uh, free build now what we're going to be looking at here you can see I'm just going to make a regular pipe and using this as a description okay so as you can see there with the blue line coming out what I'd like to see almost is like Microsoft paint because with the system you're very restricted to what kind of curve you can make it's always going to be a nice you know even curve for the most part and if you try it any other way it makes a horizontal line and that's where it causes issues because it's not exactly what you're wanting see I wanted to make a you know kind of a curve but it made a straight line so what I'd like to see let me go right here and open up paint real quick 
is something along the lines of this. Okay, so we get our, our we're in the custom builder. We made our two blocks. So sorry for that abrupt cut, but for <laughs> it is now 7:14 at night, and UPS decided they're going to deliver something this late, and the guy was pounding on the door randomly. So now that we're back, I do apologize for that. We're going to say that these are the two cubicles, right? Put one there, and we'll put one down here. Now, they're not going to be perfectly sized and in line. But what I'd like to see for the curve creator, we have our connection there, the pipe. But then, instead of it automatically doing it, we can grab onto it and move the pipe however we want to on that grid. And I think that would be excellent because then you have more creation to what kind of curve do I want? You know, do I want it to come to a sharp point? Do I want it nice and round, longer, wider? Um, so that would be really awesome to see. Oh, don't want to save that. You can close out of that. Close out of that. All right. So the next thing up on the list is multi-weld. Uh, let's see which video I had for that. I'm trying to remember this is the right one or not no that's the gyro uh, where did this video go I'm trying to remember where I put this at man maybe it's this one I think it is Okay, so as you can see here, I've got um, a kind of like C shape, and the problem here, the reason we need like a multi boat is I'm going to use this video as an example. I'll be quiet for a minute just so you can see what I'm trying to do there. Okay, so what I was going, trying to do in this example is make it so this whole piece right here is connected so that this center line can twist or swing or sway, move up and down. Uh, and that way, almost like a leaf spring suspension is what I was trying to create, something that could have movement on the axis and then be able to move just ever so slightly left and right um, but what happens is this So as you can see, it sits there and it, they don't hold together. The weld is only on the single end where I first connected the pieces. So it, it messes up the effect that I was trying to do there. What I'd like to see, let me try to find the right part of the... Uh, do, 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 do. Alright, so as you can see, I placed the weld on this end. What I'd like to do is almost kind of like the um, a smart weld tool that you have in Gary's Mod, where you can select multiple connection points or pieces or parts or props, whatever you want to call it, and weld them together. So you would select um, both sides and have those two connections welded. So that way, as we see, uh, or as we saw, uh, one end doesn't come falling off and the only one side is welded and I think that would help with a lot of kind of ideas that I have in my mind that I want to try and build but because the way the welding system currently works they just would not work correctly for me all right so moving on no clip building whenever I am building it is sometimes very very frustrating that whenever I'm trying to get to a certain point 
um, I can't reach it because of the block. Now, when you're open in the when you're playing in the map or as per normal wherever, sure, don't let us go through the props. That's completely understandable. But while we're building, really give us the option to enable no clip, so that way we can go into wherever we want and weld or put another prop because some people may not realize this just because a a block is covered by a model does not mean that you cannot click on it but you have to know where it's at so you can click on it correctly and weld um, so what the no clipping would allow you to do is to essentially go inside the engine block model and see those other weld points so you know exactly where you're clicking and working um, because I think for this video what I was trying to do for example was just go into um, the middle of the motor and trying to weld something on it but I couldn't it would not let me get to that point so as you can see here um, I'm blocked off I cannot go in there um, now in a more com complex build this becomes more of a hassle because it limits you from doing things that you're trying to do whereas in my build currently right now if I really want to get into something I can do it with only moving one or two pieces um, but in some of my other builds, moving one part um, is not as carefree. I have to be very, very careful about what part I'm about to move and make sure that it's not going to mess the build up. Um, so, yeah, that's like I said, that's another thing that has been on my mind. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so the next thing under this building category is enlarge the building area because right now it seems pretty big until you start building bigger vehicles and then you quickly run out of space now I personally found two glitches that allow me to get outside of the warehouse um, to continue building however I don't think we should have to do that um, to get to get a larger building created Wow, I just totally messed that sentence up. To build something larger, um, as well as the alternative means so that you change your spawn point, teleport point. Um, but yeah, I don't think that we should have to do that to build something larger. I mean, within reason. I'm not saying build something like Zol builds. I mean, some of his are pretty massive. I'm not talking on that scale, but on... If I wanted to play, make like a really nice um, larger aircraft, like an aircraft, um, I just forgot the name of it, C-17 or something like that. I think that's the name, I can't even remember, or AC-130, you know, something absolutely ginormous. I'm really limited on the amount of space that I have to create that. Um, I think that's all for the building section. Yep. Alright, so the last category that I have here is miscellaneous stuff this is just a bunch of random things um, so first thing up custom flames because why not <laughs> when you fly your vehicle um, into the water you get these awesome looking flames and I love the ability to customize the flames and the flames effect so you can see the typically yellow and everything but you go into water and you get this nice, almost lightsaber-like glow of the red on top of it. And what I'd like to do is to have that property of the rocket engines so that I can change the colors. So, it, say, instead of making this inner bit yellow, make it red or blue, whatever color I want. You know, almost like you can with the, uh, the smoker or whatever you want to call it, where you can change the colors. Let us change the colors of the rockets. I mean... Imagine blue flames with the white outer edge or a white inner with blue on the outside, you know, just to give it more of, this is my signature touch on it, you know, so even if someone has a vehicle similar to mine, they might make it look completely different. And I think that would be absolutely awesome. So, let's see here. Alright, so... Exit anywhere from the game. Now, right now, 
you can't really exit the game while you're in the workshop whether you're in the building or the tuning area because if you hit escape or the menu button in the bottom right it opens up the same thing uh, like your settings your key binds and stuff like that it doesn't give you an option to leave the game so in order to get the option to leave the game you have to first load into the map then hit exit and then you can say exit the game or if you're like me most times if I'm in the building or tuning area I'll save I'll bake the vehicle and then I just alt F4 um, because I don't feel like having to wait load into the map hit escape then get the option to leave the game so you know add that option to every area of the game whenever you hit escape so that you can just exit the game no matter where you're from no matter where you're at the next thing up is the build list now whenever you're in the map and you're getting ready to spawn your vehicle if you're like me you start having a lot of vehicles really quickly and what I'd like to see there is an option to enable or disable alphabetical or sort by day almost like you would your Windows um, folders you can sort by relevance sort by date sort by um, the name and so that way if I'm looking for a vehicle that starts with the B I know it's going to be on the first one or two pages of my vehicle list instead of them just being in the order that I made them. So that way it's better organized, easier to find things. You can just think of the name, know roughly where it's at once you get to that alphabetical section. And so that way you can find your things that much more easily. This next one um, is an issue that I personally have. I don't know if other ones other people have it as well that are multi monitors I currently run three monitors I have the center one that we are recording I have a left one and I have a right one um, and my issue with the game is I'm I've made sure it's on full screen um, the resolution everything set but just like you see right now if I'm playing the game wah, da, da, the mouse is on the screen but if I go too far right the game does not set a border so my mouse just goes off screen um, and that causes issues because if I go to spawn something again and not realize that my mouse is off the game screen I click and the game minimizes what I so I'm not sure how you can fix that you know make the game grab the mouse own the mouse um, while the game is open or something uh, so that doesn't happen I don't know if there's a setting I need to change if one of the developers or somebody else in the computer community has a, a multi monitor set up and they've figured out how to fix that so the mouse doesn't go off screen please let me know I would greatly appreciate that next up is um, mouse wheel weapon switching so if I have a tank or an aircraft that I have multiple weapon types on there instead of having to set a bind for each one of them what I'd like to do is to have the ability to scroll mouse through the weapons and then have you know a single bind key for all the weapons but then using my mouse wheel just like you would in a first person shooter game um, you can scroll through select your next weapon fire it using the same exact key switch to the next weapon use the same exact key so they're individual and not shooting all at once because right now the way it works is if you have different weapons all bound to the same key and you press that key they're all gonna shoot and that's not what I would want I would want the individual shooting of them um, in this example the last and final thing on the list is actually it should actually be in the building area I'll make sure I correct that for you uh, developers when I send that email is the uh, suspension wheel hubs now what we're going to see here is in this video of my car, it, the wheel, I know I just have it out of place because for this example, I just stuck it on so it's easier to see. Now, on my actual build, I have normal wheels, you know, not suspension, and this is the reason why. If you have too much weight on those suspension wheel hubs, no matter how you set the, the damping and the force and everything, this issue occurs and it just looks god awful it makes for really bad handling and it's just a real pain in the butt but as you can see here um, look at the wheel I mean it, it just jerks and it looks absolutely horrible like I said it causes bouncing if you reverse and try to go forward it will do this 
Um, even when you're driving in a straight line, it'll do this. If you try to turn, uh, the wheel just gives out, um, and it's just horrible. Here's the same example again, but now with the smaller wheel instead of the larger F1 wheel. And you can see it's just, it's not happy. <laughs> like I said, with a lighter vehicle, this issue doesn't really occur. It does ever so slightly, but it's not as bad. But as soon as you start putting armor plates and more weight on, like for my car, it has a lot of weight on it because I wanted to fill in the body the best I could. You can see that it almost breaks the suspension because you have a lot of camber and the wheel is extremely bouncy, which is not very good. So yeah, that's another issue with that. Like I said, in my list that I send you developers, I will make sure to put that in the building list section. Um, but for now, that is going to be all. I uh, will start working on my next list and getting that via video out once I get near you know 15 or so things again. So thank you for coming out. Uh, this is Sean K116. I hope that you have a great morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are across the world. Take care. Peace.